Stand by for Bawana.org radio. In three, two, one. Cue the announcer. You found Bawana.org radio. Your one source for tech news and reviews. Now, almost live from sunny Florida, here's your host, Bawana McCall. Greetings, folks, and welcome to episode 257 of Buana.org Radio. we got a great show lined up for you. Uh, I apologize for uh, not being around uh, for the past few weeks. Um, I've been experiencing some technical difficulties on top of the, uh, I don't know, I, I guess I want to call it my standards for releasing a show. Um, uh, uh, as a lot of you know, I had some mixer problems and some uh, microphone problems, and I tried to buy uh, new equipment. And uh, I bought a cheap USB condenser mic, and um, let's just say it didn't fit my standards of quality. Um, it was very tangy, and you know the lows weren't low enough, and it was definitely worth the price I paid for it. It was like thirty to forty dollars, and so I was like, "All right, I think I should uh, should get better equipment." Um, I, I my old condenser mic which i've had since 2005 which you're listening to right now this is a marshall mxl mic uh mxl v67 i'm looking at it right now as i say this and um the problem was my mixer my old motu mixer died and that's why i was looking for better equipment so i broke down and just got a behringer mixer and uh, i didn't get it it was actually given to me for my birthday happy birthday to me Happy birthday to me. That's another story. Um, so Xenix Q802 USB, which I really like the USB part because I don't have to worry about fishing the uh, audio through line in or anything on my PC. So that's what you're listening to. This is my um, my old Marshall MXL mic, which is back. And I'm very, 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 let's count them, 20,000 varies happy that this setup is working again i'm motivated to do some more shows we got a great show lined up for episode 257 of buana.org radio it's time for buana.org radio's tech news for this week and for our first story we're going to talk about one of the biggest stories that's been on my mind for the past weekend it has to do with the rss news aggregator slash reader google reader uh, Google Reader has been my uh, RSS reader of choice for a very, very long time. We're talking years. Um, it's been my primary mechanism for gathering news from around the web. And uh, a lot of the new media, social, uh, social media experts, social, I don't know, futurists, I don't know what, the, what you want to call them. People who like to predict trends in social media like, like to say that RSS is kind of a dead medium for gathering news and uh, back then when they said it and even now I disagree with that um, the, the, the thing that 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 irks me so much about this 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 story is that you know first let's tell you what happened Google has decided to shut down Google Reader just abruptly shut it down um, in a few weeks and that's not the story I'm going to talk about here, but it has to do with that. I want to kind of set this up because I haven't talked to you guys in a while. Google Reader, Google Reader has been my primary source of gathering information. So shows like this one, Buona.org Radio, my other podcasts like Game Chat with Buona, and just general news gathering on other stuff has all been done in the RSS Reader. And I've been able to manage my feeds in a way to where I can gather a lot of information in a short amount of time. Um, And I can get the best stories on the web fairly quickly. So there's a lot of naysayers out there, a lot of the futurists, a lot of the uh, trendsetters, I guess. They say that, no, 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 RSS is dead. There's better ways like Pinterest. There's Twitter. There's uh, all these other mechanisms, uh, Facebook. I, I, I don't see those as the same type of way. Of gathering information for example you know there's some people who like to read the newspaper to get news there's certain people that like to watch CNN to get news there's other people that just I don't know uh, they'll call their friends and ask what was the latest thing to me Twitter Facebook uh, Pinterest and all these other sites they 
are alternate ways of getting news and they're different types of news that I usually get on Google Reader. Twitter is more about what's happening right now. Google Reader is kind of an inbox of all the news on the web that I can sift through and pick what I want to read later. Pinterest is kind of an image board. It's, it's a souped up image board. I mean, 4chan has been doing image boards for years. Pinterest is a souped up image board. It's, 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 it's different purposes. And it's kind of sad to see Google replace, or I'm sorry, see Google get rid of Google Reader so abruptly. Now, I saw some articles where uh, a former Google Reader developer said that Google Reader had been on the chopping block since its inception. They've, they had been fighting and clamoring for it since it, it first came out, which doesn't surprise me um, because it hadn't seen a lot of love over the past few years. Uh, I mean, it got a UI facelift, but that was about it. So the story I'm going to be talking about <laughs> has to do with Google possibly replacing Google Reader with something called Play News. You've heard of Google Play, right? That's the Google Store. And this came by way of some source code found by Android Police, which found something referencing the name Play News. And in this article, it says this is what the source code read. To read Google Play News, you must have a supported Android phone or tablet. Please sign in to get this news edition. Please sign in to purchase this news issue. Please sign in to purchase this news edition subscription. So this article over on Gotta Be Mobile is speculating that Google is going to produce something similar to Apple's newsstand. You've heard of Apple's newsstand, right? It combines the two it, it, it basically combines magazines and newspapers into one. Now, to me, that's kind of a step down. I mean, that's Flipboard from my perspective. Flipboard is another one that people say you should use. Flipboard isn't bad. You know, I read Flipboard while I'm on my treadmill. It's not, it's not, a, big, it's not a bad thing. It's a different type of way of ingesting news. But when I'm sitting at, I, sitting at my computer or I'm on my phone, and I want to go through all the tech news or all the gaming news or all the food and all the, you know, the images and all the different groups I have on my Google Reader subscriptions. You know, it's a different way of ingesting news. You know, these are more like, uh, like I said, reading newspapers versus doing things a different way. So check this story out over on GottaBeMobile.com. Let me know what you think about Google possibly replacing Google Reader with this thing called Play News. And for our next story, we're going to continue talking about this idea of Google Reader and um, and just ingesting news from the web. Uh, this story over on iMore.com talks about how to use Twitter lists to keep up with news. Twitter lists, if you don't know, are virtual lists that you can create of users or brands that you follow on Twitter. And uh, you can separate these from your ordinary followers list. For example, uh, I like to keep the busy or the, I don't know, yeah, the busy, the busy feeds in their own Twitter list. People like Robert Scoble and Chris Perillo and uh, Louis Gray and, and all these different uh, people that I follow that sometimes tweet a lot or have some, some, some content that I may want to visit every now and then. I would throw them in a Twitter list. So this article talks about how to use that mechanism to keep up with Twitter news. Now, if you don't know, you can follow websites on Twitter. They tend to post their articles that they put on their blogs on Twitter uh, as they post them. Also, you know, breaking news is a big thing on Twitter. So this goes back to what I was saying earlier about using different tools to read news a different way. And I've used Twitter lists. I still use them for various reasons. And uh, it's kind of like a way of following a brand or following a person. It's a little bit different than reading the news that's going on in the tech sphere. Um, you know, there are aggregators. There are news aggregators out there that do post to Twitter. But Google Reader 
Let's go back to that because this is kind of an article written to replace Google Reader with Twitter lists. Google Reader allows you to go through a ton of articles really fast, save and star them, share them, you know, using keyboard shortcuts and going really, really fast doing it. It's very efficient. If I ever want to go back to 2008 and find an article that I read about, I don't know, TechCrunch doing something, I could easily go on Google Reader and do it. Twitter? No. Not only can Google Reader allow me to read news fast and efficiently, I can archive articles. Now, Twitter has this save for later stuff that I'll, I'm not going to get into, but it's not the same to me. Google Reader treats, in, it has an inbox-like mechanism for news. And to me, that works. Especially the way that I ingest news. The way that I save and archive articles for my shows. And just for general knowledge. But Twitter lists, they kind of are a way to organize existing Twitter users. I don't think it's a very smart way of reading news per se. It's more of a way of organizing your existing Twitter, the people you follow on Twitter. And yeah, like I said, you can follow brands. You can get up to date breaking news using this. And that's a, that's a valid way to use it. But to say that people should replace Google Reader with this kind of assumes that they use Google Reader for breaking news. Some people do. I'm not going to lie. Some people, they will only read the current day's news and mark the rest as read. And that I'm not knocking them for doing it that way. But this article assumes that you do that. So when you go and read this, you know, keep that in mind. If you are considering using Twitter less as a replacement for Google Reader, keep that in mind. This is over on iMore.com. Check it out, guys. How to use Twitter less to keep up with news. Now that Google Reader's gone. You're listening to Bawana.org Radio, a potpourri of tech news and reviews. And for our next story, we're going to talk about BlackBerry. BlackBerry? Yeah, that uh, that research in motion company. Uh, that makes the BlackBerry branded phones and devices. This article is kind of those facepalm articles. This might be the facepalm moment of the show. But the BlackBerry CEO, Thornston Hines, has been quoted as saying that the iPhone is now dated and is being left behind. Hmm. Yeah, you, you see where I'm getting at, right? So he goes on to say that how, let, let me read this quote. Apple did a fantastic job in bringing touch devices to market. They did a fantastic job with the user interface. They are design icon. There's a reason why they were so they were so successful. You see where he's how he's wording this. And we actually have to admit this and respect that. History repeats itself again, I guess. The rate of innovation is so high in our industry that if you don't innovate at the speed, you can be replaced pretty quickly. The user interface on the iPhone, this is what he's referring to, the interface. With all due respect for what this invention was about is now five years old. He's right. The UI in its general scheme is five years old. And this article over on iMore says he went on to explain that one area where he felt BlackBerry 10 devices had overtaken the iPhone was in the area of multitasking. Uh, he believes that having multiple apps open at the same time trumps the idea of Apple's uh, mechanism of having fast app switching by saving the state of an app without closing it. BlackBerry does things in a different way and allows you to have up to eight apps to run in the background. And when you open the ninth app, one is automatically closed. So he's saying that Apple's UI, Apple's way of, of navigating the device is dated. It's five years old. And um, he believes that Apple is no longer innovating in that area. Well, Mr. Hines, there's uh, something called a file. And there's also something called a folder. They've been a while, been, been around for about over 100 years. That archaic UI was taken and embraced and brought on to computers. And it's still used today. 
is it dated? I would call it functional. If something is functional, and this is my opinion on this, if something is functional, works, gets the job done in a seamless, efficient manner, you don't have to change it. This has been a staple of Apple's products for years and years and years and years. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So what Apple did is that they took a design and they tweaked it and tuned it and what they believe perfected it to the point to where they don't have to alter it further unless they go with a gross redesign, a complete rewrite. This UI, like, like he admits, was innovative. It forced the whole market to change, even though back then people said it was stupid, but they were forced to change and now they embraced it and now they're they're condone they're basically condemning Apple for sticking with it after they embraced it, which is kind of hilarious. So after admitting that Apple kicked their behind, which is what they did to Rim, he goes on to say that they need to change, which makes absolutely no sense. Mr. Hines, your company is in is is, is in a state to where I don't think you can talk like this. Sure, you got a new BlackBerry 10 OS that you're trying to pimp. You believe your OS is more innovative than everybody else. Who wouldn't believe that? Stand behind your products. I, I respect that. But to say that Apple is stagnating because they have brought forth a UI that works, is efficient. And they're sticking with it. They're tweaking and tuning and adding features that users have asked for. And you're saying that they're... They're not innovating. Now, I tried Android. I haven't tried BlackBerry 10 yet, but I did try Android on a Nexus device uh, last year. And I used it for like three months. And I went right back to iOS. I could not see myself using that device in its current state and day-to-day -day stuff. To me, iOS felt superior for what I need to do. Now, that's not a statement that's saying that iOS is better than Android because that is completely user specific. That is my opinion. That is my way of using the phone. Now, my wife, she went from iOS to Android and now she prefers Android. So it's like different strokes for different folks. Apple's UI, and she, she'll she even admit when she went to uh to Android, she was like, certain things are just really crazy on here. She's like, on Apple, I just have to tap this and tap that, and I'm there. And this, you know, is, is kind of weird, but she got used to it over time. Apple's UI is a simple icon touchscreen interface. It's very simple. There's nothing complicated about it. It has a grid layout. You tap an icon to launch it. It's consistent. It's clean. Users understand it. They get it. What BlackBerry is trying to do is they're trying to bring multitasking to a tiny screen. And I respect that, but I don't think it's necessary. I really don't. I don't think it's necessary. Samsung's doing some wacky stuff with the, with the Galaxy. And I say wacky because to me it feels gimmicky. It's like outside the scope of stock Android stuff. It's like custom OS type stuff. Like this tap to transfer stuff. It reminds me of the infrared stuff from back in the day that three people used. It's, it's very niche gimmicky things that they're claiming Apple needs to do to beat them. When in essence, it's the core functionality of these devices that keep the users. Now, the Galaxy is a great phone. I'm not going to say it's a bad phone. But I don't think people keep that phone or they... They love that phone for touch to transfer or tap to transfer, whatever it's called. It's the core features. It's the core elements of the phone. And that's what he's knocking here. He's saying that Apple's UI, their core user interface, is dated. And I disagree so hard that I believe the UI is clean, consistent, and works. Why change it? Eventually, they're going to have to revamp it. I'm not saying keep it forever. But the phone is selling. They're doing well. People are like, say, oh, Apple is dead because Android overtook them. Um, no. Apple's doing 
fine. Look at their balance sheet. They're doing great. This is the best Apple has ever done. Now, I'm not going to knock Android because Android's come a long way. And I say Android because that's a collection of many, many companies targeting Apple. So if they don't overtake Apple, it's kind of a laughable affair. Like with the iPod, you guys remember that? All these companies allied and they were like, we're going to take down Apple because you need your choice. And then we're the iPod competitors today. Android said, nope, we're not going to follow those guys' footsteps. We're going to ally with these companies and we're going to generate a billion phones and we're going to flood the market with Android devices. And sure enough, they did and it worked. But Apple's not dead. And this BlackBerry guy and even the Samsung and all the other companies are trying to get you to believe that Apple is dead and Apple is dying simply because it's not on the tip of everybody's tongue. But people like iDevices including myself. So check the story out, guys, over on iMore.com. They got the details about this BlackBerry CEO saying that the iPhone's UI is dated and is being left behind. And for our next story, we're going to talk about Cyanogen Mod. This is a, a very, very popular mod for the Android platform that people use to uh, basically replace the OS on their devices. It's a custom firmware. Uh, and if you talk to any big time geeky you know low level uh i don't know i don't know the word someone who's really into android and flashing firmwares they'll tell you that the c mod or cyanogen mod uh cm is i think is the term they use cm is a must-have and uh it, it, it has a lot of features that people just can't live without uh they're like no i'd never go stalk android i have to have cm and uh when I saw this article, I thought about those people. It states there over on Slash Gear that the, Cy the, the, the Cyanogen mod developers have stated that they're not going to support the Samsung Galaxy S4, which was just recently, just recently announced. And this has to do with some limitations on the phone, on the international version that I don't know the specifics of, but it's going to hinder their ability to do the modding. So they've been quoted as saying, this is uh, XPLOD Weld, that name. He says that nobody at the team, at Team Hacksung, plans to buy the Samsung Galaxy S4, nor develop for it. Uh, and they're the team behind the official uh, Cyanogen mod ports. That doesn't mean that nobody's going to do it, just the official people aren't going to do it. And this is the dev team. They mostly blame the different variants of the new device. One being that the, of the Qualcomm Snapdragon 600 version in the U.S. And the international version, which has the 8-core EXNOS 5 chip. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. It, it's, it's kind of disheartening to see this because I've seen CM. And it was impressive. Um, I think it was actually better than the stock Android. And that's rare for, for custom firmwares. Usually they're a little bit rough. This one was very clean. Um, I know people behind C or people who use CM who are planning to get the Galaxy S4 are not happy about this. And as someone who had been eyeing the S4, me, as possible as possibly being their next phone. This kind of deters my decision a little bit more anyway. We're going to talk about that in the next story. Uh, it it kind of disheartens me that they're not going to support it. I'm not saying they should. I, it's just, wow, that, that's, that, that bums me out. Because if I do, for some reason, decide to get the Galaxy S4, that option is going to be crossed off the list. I can't use CM. And Android is all about options, right? When you limit your options, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of taking away with what Android has been touting as being their strength. So check the story out, guys. Cyanogen Mod developers say they're not going to support the Samsung Galaxy S4. Are they going to stick to their guns and not? Or are they going to cave and actually get it working anyway? Only time will tell. Check it out, guys. Over on Slash Care. <laughs> 
You found Bawana.org Radio. Tech news and tech gadgets for the hardcore geek in all of us. And for our next story, we're going to talk about the uh, Galaxy S4. Now, I I was on the fence. I, I even posted on my Google Plus feed that I was going to possibly switch Thinking about switching to the Galaxy S4 after uh, I, I quoted Andy Anatka's article that he had switched to uh, Android from iPhone. And I was like, yeah, I'll probably do that when my contract is up as well. And I was like, I'm going to wait for the Galaxy S4. I didn't put this in the article, but basically I'm going to wait to see what the Galaxy S4 brings and see if I want to get it. Currently, my, uh, my current state of mind is I'm leaning towards iOS. Uh, and I'm thinking back to my experiment, my three-month experiment that I did with Android and how I went back to iOS. Now, this article over on iMore talks about a poll, uh, which, you know, I was kind of on the boat thinking about doing. Thinking about leaving the iPhone for the Galaxy S4. This is a jumping ship test is what they're calling it. Um so are you going to stick with iOS devices, iPhone 5, uh, iPad, or are you going to move to a different platform? Now let's talk about the idea of moving to a platform. If you've invested in applications, say in iOS, say you've bought, I don't know, $100 worth of apps, you're going to have to consider abandoning those apps when you move to a different platform. And that's something that a lot of people don't, they just don't consider until after the fact you've invested all that time and money into those apps you're going to be abandoning them it's like moving to a different platform you can't use the same apps they're not going to say oh we'll transfer your purchases from ios over to google play you know no no nobody's going to do that those apps are gone for good so you've got to find either money to buy replacements and you got to find replacements so it's something that you have to consider. And I looked at the apps that I use daily on my um, iPhone, iOS devices, and a majority of them have, you know, ports to Android, but they are subpar ports. One of the, the biggest apps I use on my iPhone and iOS devices is the Twitch TV app. That's one of my primary sources of entertainment. I watch video game streams. The Android uh, version of that app is very, 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 very feature lacking. I don't even know if that's a word. It lacks a lot of features. It lacks a lot of things that it needs to have. There's also the idea of the UI and uh, how to do things in the OS and you know, I was talking about an article the other day. I've actually been thinking about this a lot. The 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 UI responsiveness of Android devices is a lot less than iOS. And uh, uh, an iOS, uh, I mean, a, a Google, former Google developer, went on record to state why that is. And he was talking about the whole idea behind uh, how the, the underlining principles of the OS dictate that you have to do things a certain way. And it's always going to be slower than... Uh, Windows Phone and iOS devices, which I agree with, just based on my usage of the devices. The Android devices are the UI is is sluggier, sluggier, sluggish, sluggish ear, more sluggish. There we go, more sluggish than their iOS counterparts. Even with better hardware, you it is possible to have a slower experience on Android devices. That was one of my quirks. That was one of my problems with Android when I tried it. It felt sluggish. You're like, oh, the hardware is better. That doesn't matter. It felt sluggish. So, you know, with better devices coming out, like the Galaxy S3 and the S4, which are have insane specs, and that sluggish factor is kind of going away. It's not completely gone. It still remains. If you get an iOS device like the iPhone 5, it's going to be faster, even with lesser specs. And that's why I tell people, you know, you, you can't look at specs all the time. It, you can't just look at processor and memory and all that stuff. It, it's 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 a it's a cliche with Apple users, but it's the truth. It's like you have to look at the user experience. 
What good is it to have a really fast processor and a lot of memory if the OS is just stupid slow? Doesn't make sense. It really, really doesn't make sense. So, am I jumping ship to the Galaxy S4 from the iPhone? Right now, I'm leaning towards no. It's it's kind of a no factor because, you know, not only is the, the app um, app investment a factor, but also the UI sluggishness, if if it has sluggishness, sluggishness, I cannot use that word in a sentence. I forbid myself. On top of the fact that, you know, these devices require an investment in the platform. That kind of goes with the apps argument. But you, if you're making an investment, if this is going to be your primary phone, this is what I'm talking about, my primary phone, not carrying two phones. You're investing in that platform. And you have to look at that platform's future and say, does it meet my needs for my phone usage? And currently, iOS meets my needs. And then some. I mean, I'm, I I love the device. I got an iPhone 4. Guys, I'm two generations behind. I got an iPhone 4, and it's fast. It does what I need it to do. I have no issues with it at all. I don't need Siri. I, I, people are like, oh, Siri is awesome. I, yeah, it probably is, but I don't need it. I like to have it sometimes when I'm driving when I want to do a text message, but uh, those are very, very few and far in between. But I'm happy with the device. And that's what you you should ask yourself if you're faced with this jumping ship test. Are you happy with your current device or are you unhappy? Because if you're content, but you're just you're just curious about what's better out there, you may find yourself in a situation where you're going to regret your decision. You're going to say, "Man, I should have stuck with iOS because, you know, while this is cool and everything, you know, that device actually felt better for me." That's some serious questions to ask yourself before you drop $300, $400 and a new contract on a new phone. Check it out, guys. Over on iMore.com to get the details about this jumping ship test. Are you going to move from your iPhone device to your Samsung Galaxy S4 when it comes out in a few months? Ask yourself. And for our final story, we're going to talk about something that shocked me. This is very recent, like hot out the press. Adobe CTO. Adobe's chief technology officer, Kevin Lynch, has left the company. Oh, okay, that's not a big deal. But he's leaving Adobe to go to, you guessed it, Apple. <laughs> you probably didn't guess it. Adobe CTO is going to Apple, guys. This man, CTO of a company, which was head-to-head -head just in dire, it was they were just in serious contention with Apple over flash and you guys remember this a, a couple years ago even i think it was a couple years ago last year even apple went on an anti-flash marketing campaign and adobe had to respond apple said that we will not include flash on our devices because frankly it is terrible on ios and on mac operating systems and Adobe fought back and said, no, 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 we're working on something better. It's going to be awesome. The Flash is used on a billion devices for a billion. And look where we are today, guys. Look where we are today. Flash is essentially being abandoned on mobile devices for HTML5. If you didn't know, now you know. It's essentially being abandoned. And it is terrible. It's, it's a great technology. It's used on, 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 on Windows and stuff. It's a great technology. It's very flexible, but it could crash your computer, man. It's, 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 some, it's some really bad stuff in it. It's not stable at all. So I was kind of shocked to see Kevin Lynch leave. Kevin Lynch is leaving Adobe to go to Apple of all companies. I guess it makes sense when you think about where Adobe is going. They're going towards HTML5. Apple's going to, towards HTML5 and and uh but wow you gotta wonder man but he's leaving uh adobe effective march 22nd to take a position at apple huh wow so i'll let you guys chew on that one for a bit i don't know what else to say other than um you never know who's gonna go where i mean this is a big time decision this is the cto the c 
T.O. It's a big, big prestigious position at Adobe, and he's leaving it to go to Apple. Got to wonder who he's going to replace at Apple, or, hmm, that'll be the next topic we talk about on our next show. <laughs> and that concludes episode, episode 257 of One Radio. I want to thank everybody for listening. This is our first episode back on our condenser mic again and the new mixer. Uh, happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Yes. Check us out, guys. I'm over on radio.buona.org. You can check out all the archives. I'm also on YouTube. Check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash iobuffa. Follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash buona. Uh, you can check out my live stream that I stream occasionally, occasionally being daily, at live.buona.tv. It's a video game stream. We play games and we talk tech sometimes. I also have a tech stream that is also available on live.buona.tv. So when I do tech streams and when I do keynotes and uh, discussions and stuff, you can find it over on live.buona.tv. Thanks, guys, for listening. Buona.org 257, and I will see you next time.